I'm here at Kinesic Sport Lab with Jeff Zahavic. And what is it that goes on here other than cycling training at Kinesic Sport Lab? So at KSO, we are an endurance sport physiology lab. So if you're a runner, a cyclist, obviously, triathlon. We do all sorts of like coaching, testing, uh, strength training, basically anything and everything to support the athlete. So tonight, what is it that I'm going to actually be doing? So tonight, we are going to be using the bikes on the Compu Trainer Studio, as you can see behind us here. Uh, we're gonna do a 20 minute functional threshold power test to determine your FTP. Well, why don't we get started setting that all up and see how it all goes. Sounds good. FTP testing, what exactly is that gonna be used for and what's the benefit? The biggest thing is with new advances in, uh, in technology and cycling, pretty much every second person you talk to, who's a pretty serious cyclist, talks a lot about power training. Uh, in past days it used to be heart rate, but now it's all about power. So when we do an FTP test, we can figure out essentially what are your seven power training zones. So that if you are training for whether it's triathlon or cycling specific, and you want to work on your aerobic base or your anaerobic capacity, meaning low end fitness or high end, you can actually use your FTP to uh, work with the technology you have, whether it's Garmin, Polar, Sun Chu, any of those heart rate monitors that, that measure power, and you can then use it to prescribe your workouts. Um, so it becomes really effective for both tracking and monitoring, but also using it effectively to just train smarter. So in your opinion, would you say there's a major benefit over using the stationary copy trainer over trying to use your power meter out on the road? Is there anything better along the lines of being indoors doing it? Or is the outdoor stuff about the same? The whole idea behind the FTP test is that it is functional, meaning that you can do it outside and then you can repeat it the same, same protocol or same method, same time of day or whatever your training block is. Um, so as long as you're using it to train consistently, um, regardless if it's inside or outside, the idea is that you can use those numbers with you specifically on your bike. At the end of the day, come summertime when you're not inside and you're using it outside, uh, it's just, it's all about repeatability, that's the biggest thing. Right. So we're going to start with a 35 minute warm up. Right. So easy effort, we're going to build it up for 10 minutes to kind of like, a, like an endurance ride. From there, we're going to do a couple of high cadence intervals just to spin up and get that anaerobic alactic system. We don't want to increase any lactic acid in your legs. We're just trying to get things firing, trying to get that RPM nice and high. And then we're going to step it up a little bit. We're going to do a five minute FTP block. So again, if you don't know what your current FTP is, think of it as race pace or maybe even a little bit harder. Okay. So we're going to hold that for five minutes. We're going to test the waters. We want to see what it feels like to activate that anaerobic lactic system. So you're gonna to start to feel that burning sensation in your legs. And from there, we're gonna knock it down nice and easy, flush it out for about five minutes. And then we're gonna start the actual test. So the FTP test, that's just the warm up, right. is a 20 minute sustained effort test. It's 0% grade, and we're literally just hanging on for dear life. Go for it and see if you can stay at a certain level. There's a little bit of strategy that goes with it. If you come out of the blocks as hard as you can, you're gonna get mass, mass, mass numbers, which looks great, but then you're gonna spend the next five minutes kind of digging yourself into your grip. So I really like to tell athletes to, to do this in five minute chunks. It's a 20 minute test, so you've got four quarters, and really pace yourself, because you wanna see a nice steady effort the whole way through. Right, so you don't blow up immediately at the start. You got it. Like I do every time I ride my bike, pretty much. We've got all the data that we could possibly need or want from that ride. How did it go? How did I do? What, uh, what do we got? Well, first of all, you tell me. How did it go? Well, it sucked really bad and my legs hurt and uh, I noticed a massive vein popping out of my forehead while I was changing earlier that I didn't know existed before. So. Typical response. Perfect. <laughs> Testament <laughs> well. So for you, 264 watts, and today we weighed in at 82.2 kilos. 
So the calculated uh, watts per kilo is 3.21 watts per kilo. Still doesn't mean anything. Not yet. So what we do is we take that number and we pop it into this power profile chart. And so at the very top, we've got 6.4 watts per kilo, which would be considered world class. And yeah, not there. And at the very bottom, we've got 1.86, which would be untrained. <laughs> so let's work upwards. All right. So very bottom, we had 3.21, which puts you basically dead smack in the middle of moderate. So cat four. Cat four. Which is not what I race. <laughs> <laughs> But so also not winning every race, so maybe that has something to do with it. So in Nova Scotia, we use Cat A, B, C, D. Right. Cat A is obviously at the top, yeah. which would be the equivalent to Cat 1. So last year you raced Cat B. Right. So that would basically be Cat 3, Cat 4. So according to this, we're, we're right where we okay. predict based on Sweet. that. Sweet. So lots of room to improve. Right. Let's break it down. We can look at pedal stroke efficiency. Mm -hmm. So the number that we use here is called spin scan. And according to this, your score was 66 out of 100. Kind of a, a new to uh, cycling athlete would have a score of about 60. So you're, you're better than that. Um, in a pro, just to show you how inefficient we, we really are as humans, would be around 80 to 85. So your score is, is, is actually decent. Average cadence was about 97 uh, revolutions per minute RPM, which is good. We know that 90 RPM is, again, kind of that optimal range, but a lot of it's just individualized. So some guys spin higher, some guys spin lower, but we do know that with 97, you could probably afford to put into a bit of a harder gear. Yeah. Push, push give us a few more watts of yeah. that. On this report, it also breaks down all of your power zones breaks down your heart rate zones, and those are all based off of the numbers that we just got. So your FTP, uh, for you, zone two, which would be your, again, your Sunday long, slow distance easy ride, would be between 146 and 198 watts. Right. And that's really meant to optimize your fat burning cable Okay. Values. So, tons of information. Yeah, way more than I Take it, <laughs> absorb it. I will. And, uh, and the great thing is, is all these metrics speak with all the technology that's currently out there. Right. So if you have a stages power meter or vector or polar, whatever it is, all that information can then get dumped into your computer, your head unit, and you can set all of your power zones accordingly. And again, start training smarter. Right. Which I don't do now. So better time than now. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Jeff, for having me tonight and uh, you know, putting me through one of the stages of the tour to hell. I really appreciate it a lot. Um, be sure to subscribe to the Student Cyclist channel for more videos like this, hopefully in the future with Jeff again, and for other content. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.